Hi Flosstube, I'm Fiona and welcome to Fiona's Craft Cottage. This is Flosstube number nine. Uh, thank you to everybody who has continued to watch these floss tubes. Um, thank you to my new subscribers, all of the likes and the comments. Um, I really appreciate them all. So thank you all so much. Um, this is an awesome community and the more I'm in it, the more I love it. So thank you everyone. Um, I greatly appreciate it. Um, I hope that you've all had a great couple of weeks um, since I did the last floss tube. Um, we've been busy here. That always sort of seems to be the way. Uh, we had a dusting of snow earlier this week, so that was fun, but unfortunately it was gone by lunchtime. Um, and now we've actually warmed up a little bit, but we still don't have any sun yet. <laughs> There'll be a few months down the road. So um, today I will be talking about uh, the cross stitching I've been working on. I have a couple of FFOs, a, another finish and some whips to show you, and I have uh, quite a bit of quilting to show you also. So, my first FFO is um, Aussie Friends from Sassy Jacks. I can always remember the names until I'm on camera. And so this is Aussie Friends, and this is a free pattern on their website. Um, and if you can stitch it and post it on social media or email it to them by February 29th, I believe, they will be making a donation to one of the various um, charities that is raising money to help with the bushfire relief in Australia. So very cool of Sassy Jacks to do that. Thank you guys. Um, and so this is uh, stitched on 14 count Ada, I believe, using the called for colors. And I just mounted it on some sticky board. There's no batting underneath it. Um, and then the shape of Australia, I cut out on my Cricut using chipboard and there's a couple of layers there. Um, and so I put some Aboriginal fabric. This is sort of Aboriginal art um, that the native Australians do. They've got this uh, really unique style of art um, that is, you know, a lot of dots and wiggles like this. And so it's really uh, an interesting form of artwork. I've always loved it. Um, so the fabric is just over the chipboard and then I painted the outline in white and Tasmania is hanging down here just using some plastic um, but this is a little state of Tasmania that hangs out down there uh, and then that's about it I can't, couldn't really find anything else to go with it um, a bow didn't really seem to be appropriate and I'm really bow challenged so that doesn't really work for me and I couldn't really find anything else to add so at the moment, that's the way this one's going to stay. Maybe if I handled it down. There we go. Against the darker brick of the fireplace, this actually stands out more. So there you have it. Okay, and now the second one's pretty much the same. This is With Love by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. Uh, this one is a $5... Um, chart on their website and the proceeds um, from the sales have been given to various charities in Australia. Um, they've raised a lot of money. I, I have not kept up with it but um, the last time I looked it was close to $10,000 so I'm guessing they've gone over that by now. So this is stitched on 14 count Ada using the called for colors and I just mounted it on sticky board. Um, I cut the circle out um, on the Cricut and then just went from like edge to edge to edge to edge with some uh, floss behind it to draw it in so that it sat nicely in a circle. Um, and then this is once again cut out on the Cricut using a chipboard. Um, I have used the basswood in the past on my finishes but it's really thin um, and so I thought I would need quite a few layers to make this thick enough so I went with chipboard instead. And this little guy over here is just a little clip-on koala. We have these floating around the house, but I could only find one. These are like really cute little souvenirs um, from Australia, and they have little hands that move and clip on. And they come in lots of variations. Um, so I thought I would hang him there. I could only find one at the house and amongst my girls' stuff, but we have a few floating around, so maybe my other one will get one also. So this is some more Aboriginal fabric. Um, thank goodness my local crafts, uh, my local quilt store has a huge selection of this. 
Um, this is just black and white with a little pink in it. And I just thought it helped these colors pop really nicely. So that's that. So both of them together. Let's see if I can hold them both up. So that's both of them together. So there's that one. A little closer up. And this one. So it's not getting chopped off. Uh, and they're both on with magnets and a washer on this. So that'll come off. And so that you can see how I um, actually stitched the back to get it to go around the circle. That was actually pretty easy. And there it is. So that's my FFOs. Um, I have a finish for Quilty Love. This is Quilty Love from uh, Laurie Holt and it's so and published by It's So Emma from um, Kimberly Jolly at the Fat Quarter Shops Company. And so this has been a stitch along where we've been doing each section a week and it will be finished for this, uh, this next week will be the last week to do this section. Um, and this is my finish. So I'm hoping to FFO this one over the weekend. Um, I already know what I'm going to do and have the supplies for it. So this has been, oh, am I holding it up? I'm holding it upside down, duh, <laughs> sorry. Um, there we go, now you can see it better. Um, so I really like the colors on the black. Um, I don't really decorate for Valentine's Day, nothing against it, just don't decorate for it. Um, and so I figured I could actually have this out all year round on the black um, like in my quilt area or crafty area if I ever get one going. So there we go. And I use the Call for Colors DMC thread and it is stitched on 14 count black Ada. So there we go. Um, so that's my other finish. And now for my whips. Um, pretty much the same as what I was working on in my last floss tube. Um, I'm still working on snowy but have made some progress. So all the snowmen are almost finished and a good portion of the mason jar is done. Um, and then I will just have to do the back stitching and some of the, uh, yeah, some of the back stitching and that'll be it. So there we go. And I'm getting a really good um, variegation in the mason jar, which is really nice. Just giving it a little funky look. And then I had already completed the small one. Um, I think I've already shown this on my last couple of floss tubes. Um, I feel like I've been working on this one for a while, so I really want to try and get this one done over the weekend if I have a chance. Um, and then I have also continued to work on Snow Village from Country Cottage Needleworks. Uh, this is not showing up. Sorry, my camera doesn't seem to want to. There we go. So this is the first part in a series that, they, that Country Cottage Needleworks is doing. They're releasing a different one each month, and I believe at this point they've released four of them. But I'm still doing the first one. And so I have... Oh, hang on, sorry. I have Wonder Clips holding it all together. And so I have that much done. And so since last my last floss tube, I have finished um, the trees are both done. Um, I finished the white along the bottom, which did actually end up getting frogged a couple of times. That was fun. And then the banner for village has been done. So this one's actually pretty close. I just need to add in the snow part banner and some snowflakes and add um, the little snowmen need some French knots on them. Uh, and I used to be able to do French knots, but it's been a bit long time since I've done them. So hopefully you can see that. Let me go in a little closer. It'd be nice if my camera worked today. There we go. And this is being stitched on 16 count Ada. Um, using the Called For Colors DMC and um, uh, Classic Colorworks thread. So it's a mixture of both. Uh, 
There we go. Sorry, getting threads caught up there. Uh, and it's really fun, a fun stitch. Um, I'm looking forward to getting the first part, the first part finished, so that I can start adding the next ones around it. Um, I believe one is going to come. The next one will be over here, and then a top and across, and then they'll go all around it. And I am stitching them all together. So, and I dyed the fabric myself using rip dye. So that is that one. Uh, and I am still made a little bit of progress on words to live by, by the tiny modernist. Um, this is also a, this is a 13 part um, design. This one goes in the middle and then they're having all the other ones go around it. Um, this is also being stitched on 14 count Ada black. Um, I love stitching on black. Um, it's probably one of my favorites. I'm sorry, I actually have some thread there. And so I started getting the framing done around this. So it will look like that around it. So I got this part done and now I'm doing over here. Um, and this design is a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. Not complaining, I love it still, but um, yeah, it's a lot bigger than what I thought. So the hot air balloon looks really cute. That was done last time I showed it though. And I love the border that's coming around it. I think it's going to look really pretty. So, and the colors on the black are just so pretty. I love it. So, Tiny Modernist is one of my favorites. They always have really pretty colors in their designs. Uh, and then my last whip is um, also from the Tiny Modernist. This will probably work better on the paper. So I started uh, I started this back in December, Christmas Village. This was also a four-part uh, four stitch-along. Uh, and by the time I started, they were on number four. So I just started on the bottom. Um, and so I have done this much so far. So the border is there. Hopefully you can see. So I did that white, the little bit of white down here underneath the words. I'm pretty sure the words were done the last floss tube. And then the Santa and the border is done for this section too. So hopefully you can see that. Sorry, I don't think I have very good lighting today. It's very dark and overcast here again. Okay, and so I did, if you can really see it on camera, but I did this little section here with the white. So it's gonna be little Christmas presents and a little Christmas tree there. And so I've done the words, this is section here, well started this section here and then Santa's done. So I still have all of this to do in this section. Uh, but it's a fun little stitch. This actually goes pretty quickly when I have a chance to work on it. Um, so that is it for my whips this week. Um, been keeping me pretty busy. Um, so this weekend I'm hoping to finish uh, the Quilty Love and have that done. And then I still want to keep working on Snow Village and Words to Live By. And then I think I'm going to start pulling some other stuff out from Jolly July last year and sort of start finishing that off um, to uh, get some things finished. I have a lot of small ornaments that I'd like to get done and get them FFO. So I've got some less, less starts and um, I'm kind of itching to get some new starts going as well. So, <laughs> But I want to get some other things finished first. So that's where I'm at in my cross stitching. Um, yeah, so that's that. Uh, for my quilting, um, I missed my quilting class on Wednesday. Um, my husband was working and I wasn't able to make it, so I missed going to that class. But I will get to make it up in a couple of weeks. Um, but I have made some progress on my quilt that I'm doing in my class. Um, so since last time, I've added the pink, bo uh, pink border around the outside. So I don't think this is, shows up. On camera as well so it's starting to get big not that big but big <laughs> um, so it's got the pink border all the way around let me try and come in a bit closer for the fabric it looks a lot more red on camera than what it really is it's really more purplish and these are this is more of a pink color really this down here this is a purpley color but this is really more these are more pinks than reds. This is 
This is a red color. But all the colors look more red than what they really are. So that's going very well. I'm happy with the progress on that. Um, and now I need to decide what step, what I want to add next. Um, the beginnings of it were designed that we sort of knew what we were going to do, but once we added this outside border, we're kind of up to ourselves now to start adding what we want to do um, for the rest of it. So I need to work that out. So that'll be fun. Um, what else am I doing quilting wise? We're, oh, and I also did some blocks. Uh, my local quilt store is doing a monthly block using um, Laurie Holt's Farm Girl Vintage 2 book, which I don't have right here, but I'm sure most of you are aware of it. Um, and our, the first block we did was Baked with Love. So I did a little six inch one. We get enough fabric in our kit to do a six inch block and a 12 inch block. So those are my first two blocks. Um, and this was actually a lot of fun. I loved doing this. It was really fun to sew all the, cut everything out and sew all the shapes together and sort of see it come together. Um, it reminded me of paper piecing with material. Um, I used to really enjoy paper piecing when I was, uh, let me just, there we go, when I scrapbooked a lot. So this has been fun. Uh, and I look forward to doing the next one. Uh, the next class for that is next Saturday the 15th. So I'm not sure what block we're doing next, but um, I look forward to it. Uh, and then I also, let me just get that out of the way. Uh, and now I've also started doing uh, Vintage Housewife. This is a sew along with Lori Holt. Uh, you can find all the information for it on her blog at beinmybonnet.com or .blogspot something. Um, I will link it below. And so she's doing a different block each week and at some point all of it's going to come together. Um, this just started last week and so far we've done, uh, this was the first block, a little oven there. Um, the baking block and then the second one was a canning one which is really cute I'm not sure if you can see that so um, and this is using an applique method that is brand new to me um, so so far I have cut out um, the blocks all of the material for the two blocks and everything's labeled in there with index cards and all of my notes um, I was going to lay them out on display boards, but I didn't want to get anything mixed up, so I have not done that yet. But I will definitely um, post photos, and hopefully those two will be done by my next plus two. Um, and uh, with that, I have actually started making some design boards. Um, these you've probably seen on... I haven't edged mine yet. I need to find some cute fabric. Um, but these you see... Um, on Fat Quarter Shop's Floss Tube and Laurie Holt has a video on YouTube on how to make them. It's really very easy, but I will link that below. Um, it's just some foam board, foam core board. Uh, and I sprayed some adhesive on it and put some down, some batting, and then I will be getting some fabric and gluing around the edges. Um, and I also made a couple of small ones for cross stitching that, to keep the floss on. Um, if you watch The Real Housewives of Cross Stitching, you will have seen Chelsea using like a big design board to put her floss on lately. Um, I just used some of the scrap pieces left over and um, once again just did some spray adhesive and um, then put the batting on top of it. And then I will add some material around the edges. Um, but again, Laurie Holtz has a really good uh, video on YouTube on how to make those, which I will link below. Um, and so, um, that's sort of where I'm at with all of that. Um, with the Vintage Housewives, I've been doing a lot of cutting and, um, I got the kit from Fat Quarter Shop, which came in this handy little box. Um, so you can actually order this on Fat Quarter Shop. It's a whole kit with all the fabric that you need for it. Um, which is really handy because I'm not used to picking out fabric yet. <laughs> I'm not there yet. So it was really great to be able to um, just get the whole kit and know that I had everything I need just to enjoy this sew along. Um, and so that's sort of my haul this week is a lot of quilting stuff. Um, I got the set for um, the Housewives, um, no, yeah, the Vintage Housewife kit. Um, and I got some 
got some interfacing for that. Lori Holtz interfacing that you need to use with the applique. Um, I also got her shapes, so simple shapes that's needed for this one. This is the Vintage Housewife. So you make the shapes out of it. So that's all the shapes in there that I need for the quilt. Um, I actually haven't even opened this. Let's open it. Um, so inside are really cool plastic shapes. If you're not familiar with Lori Holt, there's a lot of little plastic shapes and they've all they're all numbered and got information on them. There you go. Um, so anytime she's using uh, this one, she'll you call it J13, and so you know which shape to find. But there's a lot in, in here, like a lot of shapes um, that will make things. Here's a person's head. <laughs> so I'm not sure if you can see that. So um, there's way more shapes in here than what I even realized. There's a ton. So there's a dress. And so whether you use them for this quilt or other ones, you can make mix and match them all together, I've heard her say. Um, here's a shirt. So. And you know that they're this set because they're all going to be, oh, there we go. I'll put it the right way for you. They'll all have J on it. So they're all numbered and you know this set is all got J and then each one has a number on it that corresponds to the pattern. But this is a ton of like a lot, a lot. I can't even hold them all. There's tons there. And there's still another pile on my table in front of me. Um, and these really weren't that expensive. Like the whole set was like $23 or something. Um, so I was quite blown away. I'm actually blown away. There's tons in here, and some just fell on the floor. Okay, I don't want to lose any. So uh, that was very cool. I look forward to uh, using these and like it, uh, working out how to do the applique method. Um, I really love the way it looks. So um, I'm excited to get started on that. So I've got the cutout of two blocks, so now I just have to lay them down. I have to sew them, make the shapes and sew them, and um, start applicating so that'll be fun um what else did I get um oh I needed a bunch of bias makers so I got these um in four different sizes for the vintage housewife quilt um and I got a point to point turner to help get your edges out and to, when you turn it out yeah, so it'll get sewn around and then you turn it out and you can use this to sort of smooth your edges out and get the object nice and square. Um, I also got some applique pins, Lori Holtz with a cute little mason jar container. <laughs> and some glue, uh, Sue Daily glue, which was highly recommended by Lori Holtz. Um, and I also got the quilting journal. Um, I actually have one of these for cross stitching. Um, so I've been using this and I've actually almost filled it up I will need a new one soon I'm well into the 40s and it goes to 50 you can put 50 patterns in here um, so each page and both books are pretty much the same on the page um, let me hold it up for you So they're both the same and it asks you at the top the pa uh, pattern name pattern designer so pattern name pattern designer made for uh, this and this is a quilting one start date end date fabric collection quilt size block details and then this square over here has your supplies this square here is a time tracker and then this one down here is for any notes and uh, in the cross stitching one it's exactly the same except that you're not making it doesn't have made for the quilting one does have made for 
So you've got the pattern name, the pattern designer, the start and end date, the stitched on, so what sort of fabric you stitched it on, the stitch count, the stitch size. Uh, over here is your floss that you used, so you could list all your colors. And then up here you have a time tracker, which I don't, oh, over here is a time tracker, sorry. <laughs> and then here's the notes. I never keep track of mine. Um, I know I spend a lot of time on them, um, but I don't necessarily keep track. Like I don't write down if I've just spent an hour or a half hour. Uh, sometimes I might only get five or 10 minutes in between doing things with uh, my girls. So if I can get 10 minutes in and get a few stitches in, I will. So um, I would be writing down a lot of time. So I don't really worry about doing that. Um, but I did like the idea of having the quilters book, uh, the quilters journal, to um, keep track of what I'm doing in the quilt journal because the cross stitching one has been very handy. Uh, and both of these are from Fat Quarter Shop. And so I will link these below also because I have found them very, help very helpful. So that's those. Um, I also today, <laughs> I needed to get some rickrack for, um, Sorry for the plastic. Oh. So this week's block in the Vintage Housewife block, I needed some rickrack, which I really don't have, so I ordered this. Um, I also needed some Tea and Biscuits Plastic Colour Works for Snow Village. And then I got the thimble, which is way bigger than what I thought it was going to be. Um, but this is from Fat Quarter Shop, so it's a thimble, but um, it's a holder, like a pen holder or something. I thought it would be handy to put all my, like as a little trash can type thing, to put all my um, floss, like my, um, when I'm cutting off fabric, you know, my, my threads and any scraps. So this is going to become my sewing bin when I'm sewing next to my sewing machine. Um, I'm not sure if I'll really be able to carry it around because it's really big. And so the running house in my, the girls thought it was hysterical, but they kept wanting to just put their thumb on it and kept saying I needed to grow a bigger thumb to use it. So, <laughs> uh, the things think, kids think of. Um, and I actually have a small thimble collection, so um, I love thimbles. So I thought this was appropriate for my thimble collection. So, but it's really big. I don't know how... The, what are the dimensions are, but it's a good size. Good size. Next to my phone, my phone, it's like, there we go. Although I do have a big iPhone, so um, it's kind of big. Very good. It'll hold lots of stuff. Uh, and then I also have gotten two patterns from um, Annie.com. Uh, I had got some uh, a coupon for some free soft and stable. So well, I um, I didn't want to forget that they had a coupon for this, so I ordered. You have got to order it. You got to get it right. Um, so I got treasures and trinkets, a bag uh, that I thought would be really handy for cross stitching, and then also the ruler wrap, which I thought would be really handy to put all the rulers in and stuff for quilting. So not sure when I'll actually get to these, but um, I was happy to get them anyway because free stuff is good. So that is my haul this week, um, more quilting than cross stitching, but um, a lot of fun stuff and I'm really excited to uh, move forward in my quilting and um, yeah, it's uh, a lot of fun. I usually, in the past, I've really been just sort of a single crafter at a time. I scrapbook for a long time and so having two different crafts to do at once is um, a little different for me. Um, I've usually just sort of had one that I've sort of focused on at a time. So having the quilting and the stitching going at the same time is um, been a lot of fun. Um, but trying to balance the two <laughs> is uh, some challenging sometimes. I don't, sometimes I want to quilt more than what I want to stitch. Sometimes I want to stitch more than what I quilt. So, uh, but I'm making progress in both, so that's good. So I think that's about all I have for you today. Um, I think I've covered everything. I don't see anything else around me that I haven't shown you. So thank you so much for watching. Um, have a great couple of weeks. Um, please leave any questions or comments in the right below. And um, I enjoy reading them and will um, answer as soon as I can. And uh, thank you for everybody who watches and subscribes and likes. I really appreciate it. 
Have a great uh, day and weekend and happy stitching. Bye.